In this lesson, we're going to look at a few more vertical projectile motion calculations. So here we have a ball that is dropped from a 25 meter high building. The first question says, determine the velocity of the ball once it reaches the ground. Now, a lot of people always ask me, isn't the velocity of the ball zero when it reaches the ground? Um, guys, I don't know where that misconception comes from, because if you drop a ball, when it hits the ground, it's not going to just be zero. Imagine if it was, it wouldn't bounce up. But what they're talking about is the velocity just, 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 just before it hits the ground, okay? So it's not going to be zero. The only time that the velocity will be zero is when we throw a ball upwards and it reaches its maximum height before it starts falling again. Only there will the velocity be zero. So what we need to do now is bring up our famous equations. And you also have to have a good idea of what's actually happening. So what we have is this 25 meter tall building and a ball is going to be dropped. Now the word dropped implies that it doesn't have an initial velocity. So someone isn't throwing it down, they're just letting it go. So its initial velocity will be zero. Okay, so we have the initial velocity, so we can tick off those. The final velocity is what we are looking for. Acceleration, remember we always have that, that's always 9.8 down. And then the time we don't have, but what we do have is the distance. And so there we go. We can use this equation over here to work out the velocity once it hits the ground. So we can say v initial, vf squared equals to v initial squared plus 2a change in x. So the final, vel and then we must always choose a direction. I'm just going to choose down as positive. So vf squared equals to the initial velocity, which we said was 0. Now many people say, oh, well, that's just equal to 1. Remember, something to the power of 0 equals 1, not the other way around. That is just 0. And so then what we have is gravity. Now we've chosen down as positive, and gravity always acts down, so that'll be 9.8 downwards. And then the distance or the displacement that this object is going to move will be 25. And so we can typically, typically go, not typically, we can simply go and throw all of that in on the calculator, Please remember to square root your answer, and what you're going to get a, get an answer as is 22,14 meters per second. That's the final velocity. B, determine how long it will take for the ball to reach the ground. So we could simply use this first equation now. We could say Vf is equal to V initial plus A, change in time. Let's choose downwards as positive. The final velocity we now know is 22.14. The initial velocity is 0. Gravity is 9.8. Why? Because it acts down, and we've chosen down as positive. And then time, we don't have. So then what we can do is just say 9.8t is equal to 22.14. And so if you divide by 9.8, you end up with 2.26 seconds. So here I've changed the question slightly and now it becomes a lot more interesting. Now we say that the ball is thrown upwards from a 25 meter high building with an initial velocity of 20, okay, but that's thrown upwards. Now it says determine the velocity of the ball once it reaches the ground. Okay, so what we have now is we have a building that is 25 meters tall. The ball is going to be thrown upwards, okay, and then obviously what would happen is that that ball would eventually reach its maximum height it would turn around and then it would hit the ground. We want to know the velocity of the ball once it hits the ground. So let's bring out our formulas. So what many people battle with is this idea of this 25 meters. That is the, so if you have an object that is going to move from the top of a building, it's going to go up, it's going to turn around and it's going to come down. This x over here that we see in the formula, that doesn't mean distance, it means displacement. Now displacement only looks at your starting point and your ending point. It doesn't, it's not the same as distance. For example, if you and your family go on a road trip that looks like this, that looks like this, and then you end up over here, your distance would be all of this, okay? You would have to look at absolutely everything, okay? Whereas your displacement is literally from the start to the finish as a straight line. So what is the displacement of this ball? From the start to the finish as a straight line is only 25 meters. 
That is very, very important. So we do know the displacement. We don't care about this part over here. These formulas will take care of that for us. So remember, we do have the displacement, so we can circle that and we can circle that. We always have acceleration, so we can circle all three of those. We know the initial velocity, so we can circle that one. And so the only formula that stands out that doesn't have more than one unknown, or it has what we're looking for, that's this one over here. So we can say that vf squared equals to v initial squared plus 2a change in x. I'm just going to choose downwards as positive. The final velocity is what we're looking for. The initial velocity, well, the initial velocity is 20, but that's upwards. I've chosen downwards as positive, so I must put a negative 20. Then gravity is always 9.8, and we can keep it positive because we've chosen down as positive. And then the displacement, remember this is not distance, the displacement is going to be a positive 25. Why positive 25, Kevin? Because we're starting here and we're ending down here. Now, is that go does that mean the object is going is ending below or above the place that it started? It's ending below. And below is the same and, and because we chose downwards as positive, that will be a positive value. You then go type all of this in on the calculator. Remember to take the square root, and so your final velocity will be equal to, you're going to end up with a final velocity of 29.83 meters per second down. The next question says, determine how long it will take for the ball to reach the ground. Well, what we now have is we have the final velocity, we have the initial velocity, we always have a, and so we can use this formula now. So vf is equal to v initial plus a change in time. Always choose a direction as positive. So the final velocity is 29.83, and it's 29.83 down, so I can keep that positive. The initial velocity was 20 up, and so I must put a negative in the front there, because I chose down as positive. Then my gravity will be 9.8, and I'll keep that positive, because I'm because it acts downwards, and I chose down as positive, and the only unknown is time. I can then take this 20 over, so it becomes 49.83 equals to 9.8t, and so t is going to be equal to 5.08 seconds, or you can just say 5.08s.